And then, quote, he looked like a football player with his head down, charging at Officer Wilson. Charged at him, quote, and I'm reading, like a football player with his head down charging. That Michael Brown, you know, was charging like a football player full force on Officer Wilson. One witness described it as charging at Officer Wilson like a football player with his head down. Don't charge him, to quote one of the eyewitnesses, like a football player with your head down. One of Sean Hannity's favorite details out of the thousands of pages of testimony, the grand jury hearing of w Officer Darren Wilson, is a particular witness account of Michael Brown. Witness account in which Mike Brown, in the final seconds of his life, charges, quote, like a football player towards Officer Wilson. It's a detail that sounds quite exculpatory for Officer Wilson, and it is described in a piece of evidence called Witness 40 Journal Entry. The cop just stood there, and dang if that kid didn't start running right at the cop like a football player head down. But the story of Witness 40 and how that phrase has made it onto Fox News tells you just about everything you need to know about how abnormal, how strange this whole grand jury process was. Because Witness 40's story about the events of August 9th appear to be pretty tough to believe. In that same journal entry, here's how Witness 40 described how she found herself on Camfield Drive the day Michael Brown was killed. Quote, August 9th, Saturday, Saturday, 8 a.m. Well, I'm going to take my random drive to Florissant. Need to understand the black race better, so I stopped calling blacks N-word and start calling them people. Like Dad always said, you can't fear or hate an entire race because of what one man did 40 years ago. We blacked out part of the N-word in that graphic we just showed you, but it is clearly written, according to the journal entry, which, I repeat, was submitted as evidence Witness 40 woke up on August 9th and decided that on that of all mornings, randomly drive to a black neighborhood so that she will stop using the N-word. Flash forward to October 23rd. Witness 40 is brought before the grand jury, and she tells a story that basically backs up the idea that Officer Wilson was justified in his use of force. But here's the thing. One before, on October 22nd, the FBI and someone from the U.S. Attorney's Office conducted an hour and 38-minute interview with Witness 40 that runs for 99 pages of transcript, in which the questioners performed what turned out to be a methodical, devastating dissection of her account. Here's one excerpt. Question. You said you used the N-word. What kinds of comments would you make when you used it? Witness. Word for word. Question. Uh-huh. Witness. They need to kill the effing N-word. It's like an ape fest. And then it just... It is just not right. It is just not right. So I put my focus, my energy into with a couple of Wilson supporters, and we made and we have been collecting donations, and we have made schools making homemade Christmas cards. During one exchange, questioners suggest to her that she seems to have used internet accounts to fill in the blanks of her story. At various points, she complains about her short-term memory. At another point, they recited to her the various problems with her own story. Question, so you are posting racist things online, and you are telling us you know, and you're telling us you know your account, and then there are videos that don't show your car, and there's a map that shows you couldn't left the way you left from. Witness, I, I don't know. I don't know how I left. Question, but obviously we find out what people's motivations are when you, you say you posted things online that are racist, and you come in here and tell us an account that supports Darren Wilson? It leaves you thinking it is possible this woman wasn't even there that day. And here's the kicker. That whole hour and 38 minute interrogation, that itself was played for the grand jury before Witness 40 ever took the stand. At the end of her testimony to the grand jury, she then mentioned the journal. And that is how Witness 40 journal entry also made its way into evidence. This is apparently what St. Louis Prosecutor Bob McCullough means when he says he presented all the evidence to the grand jury. It looks a lot like someone exerting zero quality control and zero judgment over what is credible and what is not, and leaving the grand jury drowning underneath the sea of conflicting information, including from a witness who wrote racist things, admitted to racist comments, has a car that never appears on video at the site, and says she woke up one day and decided to go a neighborhood, which just happened that very day to be the scene of one of the most racially divisive incidents in recent memory. And who happens to give an account that bolsters Officer Darren Wilson and her story is still being cited by Sean Hannity just last night. Witness number 40. The big kid turned around, had his arms out with an attitude. The cop stood, just stood there. Dang, if that kid didn't start running right at the cop like a football player with his head down. Joining me now, former public defender David Feige. When you read, you've read this. You've read the testimony. You've read the... Do you even think, as, as a lawyer, like, what do you think of this testimony? Well, the weirdest thing was, the first thing I read was the journal entry. And I don't know about you, but just from that, 
forget the dissection. For, forget the fact that the maps didn't correlate with what she has said. It didn't sound like any journal entry I'd ever seen or heard of, right? Yeah. Most journal entries are... It sounds are, performative. Yes, it sounds right? like it's right. They're reflective. They're like, oh, there's no, oh, I felt this way, or oh, I thought that, or oh, my gosh, it was incredible. No commentary at all. It was more like, I saw X in his right hand. With his left hand, right. he reached thusly. <laughs> then he turned <laughs> clockwise. It's like crazy. And you sit there and you read this and you're like, this just does not even have the vaguest scent of truth. And, and you have a, so this to me is, this is where we get, we get to the problem with this whole process, which is that, well, at one level, yes, he gave them all the evidence. Everything he had this woman, everything. Yes, he had this woman testify. He played an interrogation by several investigators that seemed to completely knock her story aside. Right. And then he gets the journal, and it's like, why are you even giving, why not just save everyone the time? Well, because he obviously did not exercise any curatorial judgment whatsoever. Right. I, I mean, that's the answer. By the, by the way, something Sean Hannity should do, since he's got it all. Right. I mean, it's one thing, it's one thing to use curatorial judgment, pull out this excerpt without mentioning the racist comments, without mentioning all the things that undermine her, right, and throw it up on the news. It's another thing to just sort of go, well, here you go. Uh, you decide. Whatever. And right. And the point is that this is the judgments about credibility and judgments about what people should and shouldn't see are the kinds of judgments prosecutors, any trial attorney is making all the time, yes. right? You don't just say, hey, this person came into our office, they had a scrap of paper, we well, think they might be crazy, but we're, right. what the heck, we're going to show it to you. But this is exactly why Ferguson was so simultaneously commonplace in, insofar as what it was dealing with and bizarre in how it dealt with it. Right? Elaborate. Well, by which I mean, look, the thing, one of the reasons I think that Ferguson took off the way it did is precisely because it was emblematic of a much bigger problem, right? right. Which, is, which, right. which is black men being shot by cops right. all over the place under bizarre circumstances right. and often unjustifiable circumstances. So it was in its very banality right. that it was so explosive. At the same time, how they dealt with that was completely bizarre, which is to have this farcical grand jury process, right. which is designed entirely to serve a political purpose for Bob McCullough. Right. Right. And that's where that's how that's the road we trod to get here. Which looks in this case like it attracted a Darren Wilson supporter who may or may not, it appears possibly Hello? essentially invented a, a an account that supports a it. supporter crackpot we don't know it sounds to me like you could have checked yourself out of the local mental hospital shown up and said I was there you say yeah come right in right yeah you'll be, like witness, you'll be witness 41 <laughs> exactly. because we quote are committed to giving you all the evidence it's all about transparency yeah former public defender David Feige always a pleasure thank you great to be here